Do you ever wonder why your email subscribers don't reply when you ask them to? Or maybe they're not clicking your links. It can be frustrating when you feel as if no one cares about your newsletter. But you can turn that around with just a few tweaks. You may know that I teach email marketing inside Authentic Online Marketing School and students learn to seamlessly coordinate Instagram with email with different techniques, one of which is turning followers into subscribers. But once they become subscribers, how do you get them to respond? Today's short podcast contains a discussion with Authentic Online Marketing School students asking the same question. In this episode, you'll hear how I received replies flooding my inbox from a recent newsletter, the strategy behind it, how to know what to send to get readers responding, and a great repurposing tip, plus more. By the way, Doors are opening soon for our early Black Friday offering on Authentic Online Marketing School. So be sure to join our newsletter either by subscribing to the 30-day story challenge that's going on right now or get on our AOM wait list. We will put the link in the show notes. We've got some never before offered bonuses you won't want to miss. And if you're ready to solidify your Instagram and email marketing strategy so that you can market effectively and get those subscribers responding, you'll want to get in on our Black Friday Bonanza. Now, are you ready to hear how to boost email reader response? Listen in. Welcome to Authentic Online Marketing with Ruthie Gray. Growing awareness for your blog, podcast, book, or product involves more than dancing to reels and yelling, buy my thing. This show models quality over clamor so you can put your spin on your message and market in a way that feels authentic to you because nobody wants to sound like an infomercial. And now here's your host, Ruthie Gray. Well, that's the interesting thing about pain points in life is we have the same ones way more than we realize. Mm-hmm. I think it's what's powerful about these is if we can pull out that pain point, it breaks the isolation. Yes, that's how you have that power of the one on one with that reader. And she really she knows that you really get her. You guys should have received an email last week from me, my newsletter. And it was all about how I thought I wrote Let It Be on my Mm -hmm. toy box. (laughs) (laughs) That was a great story. I love that one. Thank you. So here's the thing. And I want y'all to remember this. One call to action is always the best. But this week, I told that story and I really hit the pain point. Everybody's feeling the reels have dived. The views are down. Everybody's like, why do they keep changing the rules? And I just, I said, honestly, you guys, I'm there myself. And I didn't leave a call to action except At the end, I said, I think it was the PS. I said, if you're feeling like this too, if you think you want to join me, hit reply so I can judge. I got so many replies. So that's how you want to get, if you ever want replies, then you don't ask, you don't do any other call to action. And that is your call to action. And because I had hit that pain point so hard, they were like, I might do a couple of reels here or there, but I really am interested in this. Or I need to work on my stories anyway. This is a great time to stop in. Or I just don't even know what to do with stories, so I'm going to do this. Or or they would ask me questions, which was great market research because for my sign-up page, then I have a few FAQs about, you know, when I lose followers or what am I going to do about regular posts or things like that. That email I wrote last week, that one, it was close to my heart, but it was something that I repurposed from an Instagram post I did several months back, (laughs) that story. And I got all kinds of comments on that post. People loved it. Well, do you think they remembered that when they got that email? No. But you can also like test, look at your open rates and how the headline did and stuff like that, you know, and see how did they respond to this? And use your best work and just rework it. So that email that I wrote this week was the first 
And that and it wasn't it was still repurposed a lot of it, but with a new twist and a new idea. So once you do the work, then you don't have to work so hard later. So you also- go back and look at Jennifer some mm-hmm. of the things you've written in your uh, for Instagram and mm-hmm. elsewhere in your blog and things like that. And, and and like look at the things that are a little bit further back and see if you can repurpose some of those for okay. your emails. Okay. Or go deeper, uh, like you said. I know, I love that. That is so smart. Uh, another thing you had said was you, when I forgot what Amy's question was, but it was about Amy's sequence, you know, to check and see what people's response is. So, you know, I have... I mean, I am celebrating that I have 91 subscribers now. I had 30 at the start of summer. So woo, woo, I'm very excited. Yeah, but good. like, you know, that's not the same thing as say having 500 subscribers. So for me, when I look at, if I've got 100 subscribers, I, my perspective of engagement or response is obviously going to be different than a person who's got 500 subscribers. Mm-hmm. But what would you say are some of the indicators that, okay, this really resonated with people? Because I don't get a ton of responses to begin with, but does that mean that nothing I've written resonates? Or, so I'm not quite sure how to judge that Well, yet. so my question is this, have you been get? do you give a call to action every time you send an email? Have you been prior to the class? Before it was always go to my blog because my newsletter was always an introduction to whatever blog I wrote. And sometimes people would go and sometimes they wouldn't. But now I've just started. So maybe I don't have any. Well, the way you judge it is if they take action. First of all, do they open the email? Okay. Secondly, are they clicking on anything at all? If there is whatever the call to action is, are they doing it? Are they clicking? Are you getting any clicks? And thirdly, if the call to action is reply, are you getting in re- any replies? So going forward, you'll be able to know that. Here's something I want to put in perspective for you. With email, let's say you have 100 people on your email list. The average is 30% open rate. That means if you have 100, 100 people, you're going to have 30 people that actually respond or listen, not okay. respond open. (laughs) And then probably like a fraction of those people will respond. So you have to keep that in mind. But the email response return rate is way better than social media where you're competing with a whole bunch of other people. So if you have 100 followers on social media, Mm -hmm. your return rate is actually going to be 3%. So it's going to be three people. Wow. Stay with me for a few minutes as I break down today's discussion into five simple steps to get your subscribers responding to your emails. Number one, know your audience's pain point. Amy Smith, one of the students that you heard, is a homeschool mom who knows her audience well. Other homeschool moms who are exhausted from all the things. And if you're a homeschool mom, you totally get this. I know I do from back in the day. In our class training, she submitted her welcome series for feedback during the coaching session using a beautiful blend of our cafe method, cue, aim, fire, and edge. The cue targeted the homeschool mom's pain point. The aim made her see that she could overcome through a few simple steps. The fire contained her call to action, draw from one of these suggestions on the download the subscriber signed up for, and the edge was Amy's spin on her brand voice throughout the email. When you know your audience's pain point, sympathize and provide a solution you get their attention. Number two, use the power of story to bridge the gap. Your reader likely has a to-do list a mile long and hundreds of emails flooding her inbox every week. But everyone likes a good story. That's why we've been holding the story challenge all month. So if your readers know they're going to get that relief from you, think of it this way. Why do we get sucked into historical fiction 
or movie comedy when we don't really need it, (laughs) you can alleviate some pressure and make her day better. Number three, do market research and use what followers respond to on Instagram or other social media platforms that you're on. I turned an old Instagram post my followers loved into an email. It was the story of my so-called seven-year-old composer fame of Let It Be. Maybe you heard it. Maybe you read it. (laughs) But I found a way to bridge the gap from that story to my reader's pain point. See number one. Use what works. What posts or other content have you written or spoken that generated response? Make more content like that. Number four, the obvious undertow to this whole episode is to leave a call to action. (laughs) This is what we term the fire, and you should have one in every email. If they're not responding, maybe you're not leaving a call to action or a clear call to action. What do you want the reader to do next? Reply, click a link, share on Instagram, Don't forget to tell her what to do. And number five, the not so obvious step to getting readers' response is this. Believe in your message. Do you think I got all my subscribers on day one? Nope. (laughs) I've been list building for years. In the early days, I wasn't sure what to write or even how to get it across or even what actually the message was. But over time, through training and execution, I found my own voice and writing style and began attracting people, my target people. Many times I didn't want to send an email and I didn't believe they'd notice. But because I knew email list building was important, I took the time to do it, and pretty soon, they did notice when I didn't email. Remember the percentage I gave in the training? You have way more chance of your email list responding than you do your social media followers. Believe in your message and stay consistent because if you don't believe in your message, your readers will be confused and unsure about responding. Two things I love the most are Instagram stories and writing my newsletter. It makes sense because I weave stories throughout my newsletter and Instagram stories are, well, they're stories. The behind the scenes threads that compile the you behind your account, as well as your biz, your book, your podcast, or whatever your big message is. And people come to know and trust you and like you through little snapshots of your day, through your stories. If you haven't joined our 30-day story challenge, there's still time because you'll receive some great tips on how to foster community and create content that your audience wants. And guess what? You can use that content to springboard off of for newsletter content. The link is in the show notes for the 30-Day Simply Stories Challenge. So join us. Until next week, remember to share your unique message your way in your own authentic voice. And believe in yourself.